All right, folks, I want you to take a look at this right here with me. You see the title? School Threat Investigated in Gaston, Lincoln, Cleveland Counties. Queen City News. They have 195,000 subscribers. And as of seven days later, they have 314 views with zero comments. Now, is there something wrong with me? Or is there something wrong with this picture? Let me let you listen to the little 30 second news clip that it actually was. Cleveland County Sheriff's Office deputies now are looking into a social media post that included threats towards schools. Deputies say they're aware of a photo showing someone holding a firearm and making threats. Authorities are now working with Cleveland County Schools to investigate the whole entire incident. Officers from both Lincoln and Gaston County say they've received threats as well and have increased presence at school campuses all across the three counties. So let me let, read to you this police announcement that they put out about a week ago on September the 10th. Arrests made following school shooting threat investigation. Gastonia, North Carolina. The Gaston County Police Department has identified and arrested 11-year-old in connection with the threats posted on social media involving several Gaston County area schools. During the investigation, the 11-year-old admitted to posting the threats on social media. The subject will be charged with multiple counts of communicating threats of mass violence on educational property. Several agencies assisted in the investigation, including Gaston County Schools, Lowell Police Department, Camerton Police Department, the Gaston County District's Attorney's Office, and the North Carolina SBI. No further information will be released due to the sub suspect's age. There are no active threats at any Gaston County schools. Now, I did find articles and I found news clips. All of them are dated for the same day on the 10th. Let me show you. Thanks for joining us here live at 5 o'clock. I'm Jamie Bowl and I'm Siobhan Bryan. Multiple school districts confirming today that they saw online threats toward their schools less than a week since a student shot and killed four people at a Georgia high school. Take a look at the map here. Schools in these counties had to respond to threats today and you can see they cover a big part of our viewing area. Our Jason Puckett is in Cleveland County outside Crest Middle School where deputies believe they've identified one of the people responsible. Well, Cleveland County Sheriff's confirmed that they traced some of the posts specifically targeting Crest Middle School behind me and Burns High School to a 12 year old in the district who they say was trying to get out of class. You know, I, I try to reiterate to, to kids that, you know, once you post something and, and send it out, it, there's no retracting it and getting it back. It's just continually shared. We've blurred the post here, but these are what Cleveland County Sheriff's detectives have been investigating since they first started appearing online Monday evening. They show a hand holding a gun and posts naming both Burns High School in the county and Crest Middle School. Those threats were made um, more or less telling students not to go to school tomorrow, something bad's going to happen, um, alluding to um, possible shooting. Tuesday, extra deputies and staff were at each county school until it was determined the posts were not credible and actually came from a 12 year old student now facing juvenile punishments for their actions. You know, this particular one involving actual threats to the school and photos of the firearm, you know, it's taken very seriously. I would I would just like to emphasize to the parents that, you know, your your children are safe. We do everything possible to make sure that in Cleveland County, not alone, Lincoln County and Gaston County also seeing posts like this a little bit different, though, and they do vary. Gaston County also confirming that they identified an 11 year old who they believe was responsible for one of those posts. All the law enforcement officials we spoke with really wanted to emphasize how serious this is and that hopefully will parents will take the time to tell their kids that a post like this is not something to mess around with and can lead to some serious trouble. The kids we've been told are currently being processed by the juvenile court system. For now here in Shelby, Jason Puckett, WBTV, on your side. Jason, thank you. All right, I'm going to need you to stick with me through this. Come on now. This is for the 23-24 school year. I got it all marked out ahead. A message for our students and parents. 30,000 students in pre-K through high school. Okay? It's a lot of kids. 
code, student's code of conduct. We're going to look at these ones that are highlighted real quick. Disruption of school. A student shall not, by use of violence, force, noise, coercion, threat, intimidation, fear, passive resistance, or any other conduct intentionally cause the disruption or obstruction of any lawful function of the school or classroom while at school. Punishment for middle school and high school is the same. I'm not sure what grades these kids are in, but ranging from in-school disciplinary action up to 10 days of out-of-school suspension, alternative placement, and uh, or long-term suspension. Bullying. Students shall not bully or harass other students. Harassment or bullying behavior is a pattern of gestures or written or electronic or verbal communications or any physical act or any threatening communications that places a student or school employee in actual and reasonable fear of harm to his or her person or damage to his or her property. I don't even need to read anymore. The consequences ranges from in-school disciplinary action up to and including alternative placement and or long-term suspension. Law enforcement may be contacted and may conduct a threat assessment and or bring criminal charges as may be appropriate. Student conspiracy or plotting to cause harm to other students or staff. Students shall be prohibited from conspiring with others or plotting individually regarding harmful acts of violence against other students, faculty, or staff. In addition, students are prohibited from violent acts against the property or other students, faculty, or staff. The consequences, same for middle school and high school, ranging from in-school disciplinary action up to 10 days of out-of-school suspension, alternative placement, and our long-term long suspension, law enforcement will be contacted if required by law. Written or verbal abuse of school employees and or other adults. Now, this was written out on social media. Students shall not, through written or oral communication, cause, threaten to cause, or attempt to cause harm to principals, assistant principals, teachers, substitute teachers, substitute uh, student teachers, teachers, assistants, coaches, advisors, counselors, media specialists, bus drivers, or monitors, or other adults at any time while a student is at school or school-sponsored activities. Punishment ranging from in-school disciplinary action up to 10 days, alternative placement, long-term suspension, law enforcement will be contacted if required by law. Yes, I know it was not during school, it was threatened to happen during school. And one more. And I don't even got to look up the law for this. If it violates North Carolina criminal statutes, students shall not violate any criminal statute or local ordinance or commit any act which could result in criminal prosecution or juvenile proceedings not previously covered anywhere, else, anywhere in these rules at any time or place when the student's behavior has or is reasonably expected to have a direct and immediate impact on the orderly and efficient operation of schools and, or the safety of individuals in the school environment. Consequences, ranging from in-school disciplinary action up to 10 days suspension, alternative placement or long-term suspension, law enforcement may be contacted. Now, I want you to remember this at the, for the end of this video because I want to show there's something very important you guys have got to see. Now, I don't know if people in this county just don't give a damn about their children or what. This one, two juveniles accused of making threats against school, over 40 threats across North Carolina, 195,000 subscribers, a whole whopping 322 views with no comments, and a big one thumbs up. Oh boy. Law enforcement say it could be days to weeks before they reveal more about their investigation into these social media posts. Meanwhile, one school district in our area says the timing of this is about typical for what they see.
More law enforcement deputies parked outside school welcoming students as they showed up in multiple counties across the state. Overnight Monday, parents and students alerted law enforcement in Cleveland, Gaston, and Lincoln County to threats of violence made on social media. According to parents, several of the posts involved a handgun in a list of 25 elementary, middle, and high schools. Gaston County deputies arrested an 11-year-old while Cleveland County deputies tracked down a 12-year-old. Both now stand accused of posting the threats using social media, including TikTok. Authorities say the 12-year-old told them it was all to avoid going to school. Similar stories echoed across the Raleigh, Durham area, as well as the foothills. More than 40 schools listed, some with dates next to them. CMS leaders releasing this statement saying, in part, when acts of school violence occur in the days and weeks afterwards, school districts receive an increase in the number of threat reports. The threats, not credible, but are being taken seriously, especially nearly one week after another 14-year-old allegedly shot and killed four of his classmates and teachers and injured nine others. So this is an unfortunate reminder that this is a problem that is still plaguing our country. Mental health expert Dr. Sharish Johnson in this interview with Queen City News after that shooting, how crucial it is for parents to acknowledge this can have a lasting impact. You can't say this will never happen again because they're going to say, but it did. But yeah. What you can do is, how are you feeling? What can I do to help you feel safe today? Whenever I spoke with Cleveland County Sheriff's authorities, they tell me that right now they're still trying to investigate if these two children in the post that they made are connected or if all of this is just a coincidence that they came on the same day. In Gaston County, Daniel Pierce, Queen City News. Now, if you're foolish enough to believe that this is the first time this county has had this incident, you'd be crazy. This is from September of 2018. It says, uh, Gaston County High School student reported threat of mass shooting. A uh, 17-year-old threatened to shoot specific teachers, other students, and then turned the gun on himself. Had seven other students report this exact same story to the officials. At the end of the article, it says this isn't the first recent threat of violence. There was two teens charged with making bombs, another teen charged a year prior, threatening to shoot up the high school and another high school. Another 17 year old, or he was 17 when he made those threats, pled guilty to two counts of making false report of mass violence. He got an eight month prison sentence. And then the school had the audacity to come back and tell the families there was no problems at school. But it gets even worse, people. This past January, a mother tells the news reporters that her daughter came and told her about an elementary school student having a gun. The school didn't contact the parents. The student did. And it was only when... The parent contacted the news media. Did the parent come back to find out after the news media was calling the school system for over five hours? They finally found out that it was a BB gun. No harm, no foul. But those little kids didn't know the difference and they were terrorized. And the parents were not even notified. I don't know what North Carolina thinks about their children. They're just throwaways and we'll just make some more or what? But folks, we're not finished yet. Let me give you one more news reel. This one actually has 273,000 subscribers. And in a week, they managed to get 1,000 views. But no parents commented, nothing. Let's see what they had to say. I want to start with breaking news at this hour. At least one student has now been arrested and another identified in connection to a string of school shooting threats across our area. These threats span several counties, including Lincoln, Cleveland, and Gaston counties. WCNC Charlotte's Jesse Pierre Law in Cleveland County right now, tracking the latest in the investigation. Cleveland County Sheriff tells me it started with a social media post, a photo of a person holding a gun with several schools listed and threatened. Following the threat, several schools added additional security to their campuses, saying they are taking these threats very seriously. Violent threats. I felt like worried because of like what was happening and like kind of scared. Of school shootings in Lincoln, Gaston and Cleveland counties. 
terrified. I woke up, my, she was, I had her getting ready for school and I felt sick to my stomach. I told my husband, I'm so nervous for my baby. Um, so we, my husband and I just came to the conclusion that she was gonna go ahead and stay home. In Cleveland County, the Sheriff's Department tracking down a juvenile accused of making an initial post on social media, showing a person holding a gun, threatening several schools. Posts that have made their rounds on social media. Saw a person holding a gun saying, Crest Middle School Dragons, get ready. The agency says the child made the threats to avoid going to school. Any threat of this nature towards uh, a, a school system, uh, number one, we take very seriously and we're going to investigate it to the fullest and prosecute it to the fullest as, as far as our ability will allow us. In Gasson County, the police department arresting an 11 year old who admitted to posting threats on social media. That child facing multiple counts of communicating threats of mass violence on educational property. Students not taking the post lightly, especially in the wake of the recent school shooting in Georgia. I was I was fearing that that person would come to school and shoot up and like shoot either me or like one of my close friends. The students caught providing some with relief. I know that they got caught and that it won't happen. Jesse Pierre, WCNC Charlotte. Now, let me tell you, the only reason why I'm even aware of this story taking place is because of a Facebook reel of a parent who actually does give a damn. Like I said, it's been a week, more than a week. There's no updates. It's only everybody put everything out on the 10th and said, hey, this is what happened. That's that. And Parents didn't even bother to watch the news. They didn't care. But one parent did. And if you're in that area, get up off your butt and do something. Let me share with you what this one parent had to say. Because as far as the punishment goes, check out what happened. Gaston County Schools, it didn't have to be like this. I tried to come to you just as a concerned parent looking for answers and you dismissed me. I'm trying to figure out how a kid last week can threaten to unalive students at my son's school by pulling a fire alarm. And as the kids come running out, take them out. That's premeditated, right? Now, mind you, in the uh, orientation general assembly, the kids were told, you're not even allowed to defend yourself if you're attacked because you'll be considered the same with the fighting. There's no self-defense. We've thought about that. And less than seven days later, you placed that kid back into my son's classroom as a new student, telling my son and other students in that class, you will be nice to this person and you will not treat them differently. How in the hell do you expect my kid and the other kids to sit and concentrate and learn when they're worried about this? Now, the little bit of answers that the parents got out of the authorities when they were questioned about what the hell are y'all doing? What, what's going on? Is this for real? Are you just going to let him back in school and, and treat him like a new student and tell everybody else not to pick at him about it? Said he was going to unalive students. He's back in my son's class. And when you were asked about it, well, we didn't find that threat credible. Neither did the officers in Georgia when they were talking to that kid. Look what happened. Now, between the story that I put up for Demijah Broom and this story here, the only thing I can say is I'm so thankful my kids are grown and are, are adults. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it again. And as much as I love being a grandmother to my granddaughter, I'm almost wishing that my other kids don't have any because that's a fear of the what ifs because people out there are stupid and they're raising even more ignorant children than we've ever seen in all of our lives. Y'all hug your kids, hold them tight. Keep them at home if you're able to.